appreciated the message yeah, you gave. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was truly great. Yeah. Uh, in the image of God, today uh, we have an opportunity to recognize Black History Month. Is it just a trite or hackneyed observance to you? Or is there still life zest, vitality, wrapped up in its observance? Well, uh, I think there's feelings for and against, opinions of for and against, of both sides of that court, uh, coin. You talk to many people, they say they see no need for Black History Month. Yeah. I think Arlene points out some of the um, um, ways that we need to look at black history and bring it back to memory so that we can realize that God was in the plan and that many have suffered and that uh, yet and still many of them were, were Christians. Let's just start with prayer. Thank you, Father, so very much for this day. Thank you for all the people that are out. We ask your inspiration upon your word. We pray that we will listen and that we will apply it to our lives. We thank you for it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Black History Month um, at this time has been set aside by our nation for that particular observance. I'm going to start off though this morning with a short video that points to the importance of black history. Let's see it right here. talking about Mr. Hamilton and his racing car, but when that stopped. We're always taught that Martin Luther King had a dream, man. But those dreams can't be achieved because our brains have been changed, our minds have been slaves, so we won't get our redemption, Morgan, free, man. Will we ever be free, man, and leave this state of imprisonment and take that walk of free, damn it, green man from a traffic light invented by the same man who made gas marks to protect our organs? Another free man named Gallup Morgan. But I bet you never knew that. We need to open our minds. But how can we be taught to see if the blind lead the blind? The first person to develop significant eye surgery was a black woman named Dr. Patricia E. Barth. 
Now on that note, there's a question I must ask. If this is a great opportunity to learn and be engaged about our past, why are we not actually being taught about our past? Transatlantic slavery where we're taught black history starts, but is it really? There seems to be a lot you haven't told us. And you shut down and hold back on the board once you stand against the way you're trying to mold us. Consistent enemies of progress. You're surprised because I know things you don't expect me to know yet. And when I tell you you're wrong for telling me about me, you call it a riot or I call it a protest. The broad water farm riots. The media exacerbate and make it seem like it's a bunch of delinquent youths on the streets. When really the first cause and trigger was death at the hands of the police. We cease to know information and the truth. And that's simply because you withhold information from the youth. Maybe. Maybe one day we'll be satisfied with how our knowledge of history equates. Well, I'm sure like me, you're waiting for the teacher to fill in that space. So do so, then. Um, no answer. Well, maybe I can help and just throw out there some names. Mary Seacole, a Crimean war nurse. Mary Prince, a black female author. To be precise, she was the first. Bernie Grum, influential local activist and respected MP. Trevor McDonald, one of the first black ITN journalists to hit the TV screen. Jamal Edwards of SBTV. I went fuse ODG brought the Gazonto dance to the UK. And my foot swayed to the left and to the right like the wipers of a car's windscreen. And DJ Abrante brought Afro beats to the streets. See, it's funny when we think of our childhood memories. A man who was actually funny, Lenny Henry. Many others and the list continues. Marcus Garvey, Haile Selassie, Bob Marley, Ignatius Sancho, Tupac, Fela Kuti, Mohamed Ali, Maya Angelou, R.I.P., Kwame Nkrumah, the first Ghanaian president who retained independence from England. The wind rush ship which brought Caribbeans to Britain. So much to learn in just one month. A tip of the iceberg, a tiny grace. And what was the first black Roman emperor's name? Years passed and we're still caught up in the same civil rights age. Which isn't bad if you learn something new. But we don't. And we're not being taught enough about our culture, so there's no one else to blame but you. And if not you, then who? Questions, questions, questions. If you're not teaching us these things, then I'm inclined to believe it's because you don't know. No. You're the teacher. Your job is to teach, so you must know. And if you do, that must mean you don't want us to know. But that's low. If the information is accessible for our knowledge of our culture to grow, then why on earth wouldn't you want to let us know? Why are you focused so heavily on the influential but very few men and women who make things happen for us? Why are my people being highlighted for a predominantly negative past? Why do I know the things that you don't and I'm not the teacher? You are. Why do you focus on our negative past but not on our bright future? Why are you not abreast with the great young things that people are doing in this world? Why are young people's trademarks and stereotypes gang culture and young pregnant girls? Why are the young people not being given the time of day? And his name of Septimus Severus, by the way. I'm sure as a student, the code of conduct has been breached. So I'll stop here and let you do your job. So teach. Okay, I'd like for you to turn uh, with us to a scripture with me. Uh, Genesis, Genesis 1 and verses uh, 26, 27. All right, Genesis 1, 26. Uh, then the Lord said, let us make mankind in our image. In our life and in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea, the birds in the air, over the livestock, stock, and all the wild animals, and over all creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. The image of God. The creation of man was in God's image. He does not minimize, look down on, or belittle any of the people he created. In fact, he loves them all. He does not love one race uh, more than he loves the other. And he put, and he sent his own son 
to the earth for all. Now, let me change gears here for just a minute. The Bible speaks of the table of nations in Genesis 10. This is where after the flood, the great flood of Noah's day in Genesis 6, 7, and 8, God told Noah's three sons and their wives to repopulate or replenish the earth. To start life all over again uh, on the to start life all over again on earth uh, since everything had been destroyed in the flood. And they took God literally. Their families grew mm. and grew and grew. Amen. Now in the beginning, God placed in Mother Eve the cap capacity for producing offspring that would produce the variety of races that we have today. The black race, the yellow race, and the white race. And they were carried over after the flood by Noah's three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. One was the father of the white race, one the father of the black race, and one the father of the yellow race. Genesis 10, verse 1. Genesis 10, verse 1. This is the account of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, nor son, who themselves had sons after the flood. Now, uh, as uh, one family, they all lived together. The families of these three sons, yellow, white, black, with relative unity. If we look at verses 2 through 5, we'll see that these were the uh, descendants of Japheth's uh, line. And I'm not going to read all of those names. If you have a Bible, look at those. You'll see all of the ancestors of Japheth. That's in um, verses 2 through, uh, 2 through 5. I can't pronounce all of them, <laughs> really. But these were the offspring of Japheth, the yellow race. Then if you were to look at verses 20, uh, verses 6 through 20, you will see then the descendants of Ham. This is after the flood, after God says, repopulate the entire earth. Ham was uh, the father of the black race of people. And then, verses 21 through 26, um, we see the offspring of Ham, of Shem. Shem was the father of the white race of people. So throw these characteristics were all built in the in Mother Eve. Mm -hmm. They still were there after the flood, and they came over into the new civilization that uh, started with Noah after the flood. They were all one family. Mm -hmm. All relatives living all in the proximity of each other. They were one family. There was a natural leader who rose up among them. His name was Nimrod. Okay, we're in Genesis 10. Let's look at uh, verse 8. Verse 8. Cush was the father of Nimrod. Now, if we go back up to verse 6, we see that the sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put, and uh, Canaan. So Cush was a son of Ham, the father of the black race. Cush, verse 8, was the father of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior on the earth. So um, uh, Nimrod was a mighty Hunter, God knew that. God put that in his word and recognized that he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The first sinners, in verse 10, of his kingdom were Babylon, and then they mentioned three other cities here, and Shinar. Go down to chapter 11, verse 1. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people uh, moved eastward, 
they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. Again, we're talking about right after the flood. Verse 3. They said to each other, come, let us uh, make bricks and bake them thoroughly. Uh, they used bricks instead of stone and tar and for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches uh, to the heavens so that uh, we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Verse 5. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, if as one people are speaking the same language, uh, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them uh, there from there over all the earth. And they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel. Because of there the Lord confused the languages of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. So we see here that they were had become one language. This verse, I'm going to read verse 1 again. Now the whole earth had one language and one common speech. As the people moved eastward, they found a plain in China and settled there. Nimrod became and rose up as a leader of that particular group of people, those that came from uh, Noah and his three sons. Nimrod, their leader, <clears throat> wanted to build the Tower of Babel, a tower that would reach from the earth all the way to heavens to take over total rulership of the earth. They wanted to dethrone God. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. They wanted to de dethrone God. Yep. So really, Nimrod became the very first ruler mm. of the entire universe. Yeah. The earth. God came down to earth and squelched their efforts, confused the, their one common language that they had, and separated them into nations based on their languages. Bird of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. So you had the yellow people going this way because they had all in common the language mm -hmm. of the yellow people. Yeah. The black people and the white people. The three primary races of the, the earth. Uh, now for the sake of time, let me try to bring this all into a landing. We have a loving God. We have a God who is fair. Yeah. He doesn't love one nation more than he loves another. History, the story of man, bears record of that. According to Dr. William uh, Dwight McKissie, author of the book, Beyond Roots, a black presence in the Bible, each race has had get, been given 2,000 years to reign or to rule over civilization. The reign of Ham's descendants, the black race, the black people, was from 4,000 B.C. to 2,000 B.C. The reign of Shem's descendants, the yellow people, if you know history, was from 2000 B.C. to 300 B.C. That's approximately 2,000 years. The reign of Japheth's descendants, the white race, was from 300 B.C. until the present. That's why there is such a, a presence of white domination. God is fair. He has given everybody a chance and an opportunity to do right, to show love. Mm -hmm. to, to, you know, it's amazing. Everybody knows that there's a God, mm -hmm. yeah. but they don't want to follow him. They, mm -hmm. they want to take over and do things the way they their way. Yeah. 
But God is still in charge. He is still in charge. Yes, sir. Do we live in a perfect world today? No. 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 Is there still evil? Yes. 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 All races rule the earth, root on the on the world scene, and have messed up. Mm -hmm. We've all succumbed to Satan and yeah. his way yeah. of life. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians four four says that Satan is the god, small g, mm -hmm. is the god of this world. Yeah. And now the time that I have left left some contributions of the black race to society. You know what, um, Arlene and I have been talking. She's the one that keeps me in line when it comes to Black History Month. <laughs> she really is. She, when we're gonna have it, you know, we're gonna have it now, we're gonna have it then. Uh, I didn't know what she was gonna talk about today. Mm -hmm. All I know is <laughs> she says, she, you know, we got together, Black History Month. Okay, you can say something and I'll say something. Uh, I had no idea what she would talk about. She didn't know what I was going to talk about. But some of the points that she brought yeah. out are just amazing. Yeah, and she man. pointed out some of the things, the contributions that black people have made to society. Yeah. Yeah. In the image of God. Mm -hmm. God is a creator. God is the inventor. God is the leader. Yeah, amen. Some of the blacks down through history, there's a black presence even in the Bible. You guys know yeah, that. Yeah. You people Absolutely. know that. Zipporah yeah. was Moses' wife. She's a black woman. Mm -hmm. Jethro was her dad. Mm -hmm. Moses' father-in-law. Zephaniah, the writer of one of the books of the Bible, yeah. a black person. Mm -hmm. Simon of Cyrene, he was the one who carried Jesus' cross. Yeah. They pulled him out. He was a black man. Ruth, everybody knows the story of Ruth, how faithful she was to her mother-in-law. She's mentioned in the Bible. There's a book in the Bible about Ruth, a black woman. Rahab. This is, you know, she's a prostitute. But she she was the one who helped what Joshua and Caleb be escaped down through the basket, you know, when they were trying to get the children of Israel into the promised land. She, she's mentioned in the hall of faith. Yeah. Hebrews eleven. Rahab, she's a faithful woman. She was a black woman. Simon the, the Canaanite. I bet you, you didn't know this one, or these two. Augustine and Tertullian. They were fathers of theology. They helped shape the faith, the understanding that we have of religion today. Augustine and Tertullian. Joshua. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he led the children of Israel mm -hmm. into the promised land. Mm -hmm. David. Mm -hmm. Check it out if you don't believe it. Get together with me and we, I can show you his ancestry. David was a black man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Solomon, his son. <laughs> And then we go on to talk about some of the, the, the modern day contributors to society by contributions to society by blacks today. It was mentioned the traffic light, mm -hmm. the gas masks, portable shields for military uh, infantry, lubrications for uh, steam engines, Electric lamp, sugar refining process, fountain pen, the motor, all of these were creations of black people. As Arlene mentioned, we don't see that written in our history today, but it's true. And we need to know that. 
one person says, when we understand these things, then we know how to shape our future. That God is fair. That he loves everybody. That we have an opportunity to be great. How many uh, Barack Obamas are there out there? Little kids. You just give them an opportunity and allow them to shine. Cotton uh, cultivator, folding bed, rotary engine, um, railroad signal, ironing boards, electric uh, railway, street sweeper, lawnmower. We heard that earlier. Machines for embossing photos, uh, automatic refrigerating system. I just heard one. Uh, Earlier this week, my wife was telling me that it was a black woman uh, who invented GPS. <laughs> Everybody is using GPS. Everybody is using GPS. These are contributions that the black race have made to society today. As I said earlier, all races have had a chance to rule and they all have messed up. Now, we are all awaiting the righteous return of Jesus Christ to make all things right. Amen. Father, we thank you so very much that we can share just a little bit more about you. Your image, Father, you have you made man in the image of God. You didn't say one race over the other. And you've given us all a chance to honor and to glorify you. And thank you so very much, Father, that we can understand these things and we want to do things in accordance with your will. So thank you. Be with us. And as I mentioned, we're all waiting, Father, for Jesus who will straighten everything out. There will be all races. Amen. The, the, the black race, the yellow race, the white race mm -hmm. there. The cross, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. That's right. And we thank you so very much. And we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.